uh, thank you, Sister Saharozis, for the nice introduction. Uh, it is a great honor to be with the great scholars, especially uh, Professor uh, Khaled Abu Fadl uh, and other, others. Uh, I like to clarify first, I am not a Muslim scholar. I don't have any expertise on fiqh or Sharia law. I humbly studying, observing, following the implications of the blasphemy law and how it is tarnishing the name of Islam and how the Muslim reactions have such a profound negative effect that instead of controlling the blasphemy, they are actually spreading the blasphemy. If you think seriously, I think Muslims are respond responsible to spread more blasphemy in the world than non-Muslims have done. So uh, I am going to summarize here what my observations have been in last two decades uh, when I started studying the blasphemy and its effect. There is no, no doubt that whenever Prophet Islam or Quran has been insulted, it hurts Muslims. It hurts their feelings because they love their religion. They love our Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, but we need to definitely understand how their reaction is uh, giving the bad name to Islam. Sharia laws related to blasphemy were devised during the early period of Islam to uh, save God, to discourage people from using blasphemy to tarnish the name of the Islam. But unfortunately, many Muslim countries today have the laws uh, which is resulting in incarceration or sometime even execution. Uh, Iran, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, Somalia, and many countries have death penalty. And uh, unfortunately, the misunderstanding and the abuse of these laws uh, are affecting many uh, Muslims and also people of minority faiths like Baha'is in Iran, Khadianis in Pakistan, and Shias in Saudi Arabia, Christians in Egypt and Indonesia and some other Muslim countries often face frequently the blasphemy. And there are about 1,500 people now incarcerated in Pakistan with charges of blasphemy. Although there was no execution of the, any person with the blasphemy charges, but there are 80 to 100 people who were killed by lynching mobs. I know you all heard about stories of the, how people are blamed, like Asia Bibi, a, a village woman was blamed for blasphemy incarcerated life. The sad part is when the governor, Taisir of Punjab, and Minister Bhatti of Pakistan federal government raised the question for fair trial, they were killed. They were killed by the perpetrator. And 1,100 ulamas supported the perpetrator, saying that he is right killing a blasphemer. Why they call blasphemy? Because they are simply asking a fair trial, which is in accordance with the Quran and even with the Sharia laws. And this is the serious question. Twelve employees were killed, Charlie Hebdo in, in France. It became an international crisis. Many heads of the states of Muslim governments had to apologize to French government. Samuel Petty was murdered because he was teaching freedom of speech and he was showing the uh, cartoons. Junaid Hafiz was a Fulbright scholar who was incarcerated with charges of blasphemy. 
and when he was sentenced it was life imprisonment the lawyer who was trying to defend him the perpetrator killed him and the the judge the judge who was presiding his hearing he was threatened and he had to leave the country there was a student in uh, wali university in peshawar he was brutally murdered and ulama supporter supported the perpetrators uh, zafar bhatia is a christian and he was alleged to have blasphemy in his writing and he was incarcerated for 10 years and last year he was sentenced to death uh, a nigerian uh, muslim who is the son of this muslim scholar was critical about orthodox islam and the government punished him for 24 years a sri lankan man who simply removed the posters where the name of prophet was written and he was brutally killed is this giving a good image of islam and this is the question i offer raised by most for the muslim scholars blasphemy laws are un-islamic because they violate the teachings of the holy quran and sayings of prophet muhammad nearly all prophets were abused they were called liars fabricators sorcerers but quran has never mentioned to kill the opponent even those prophets have never uh, charged them or asked their supporters to kill them this is what the quran teaches quran says i think as i already mentioned if the god's revelation was mocked or they they are ridiculed don't sit with them leave them unless they change the subject <coughs> and another verse says <coughs> if they are told blasphemy and repent that's good for them but they if return to their voices their wrong doings allah will punish them in quran all the time it says that the punishment will be by god in life after death not in this world but why we don't follow those verses that's my major question uh, if uh, death would have been punished supported by quran our prophet would have been the first one to order killing his opponents he didn't he lived with them all his life in madina but there are lot of people who opposed them we heard the story of the woman who used to throw garbage when she didn't come out one day he asked for help that's what we have to follow it, there was a poet sohail bin amr who was using blasphemy but when he was arrested our prophet said don't treat him badly show compassion treat him gently was the prophet was asked <clears throat> whether somebody should kill his chief hypocrite his name was Abdullah bin Abi Prophet said don't do that because people will say you kill your companions the brutal acts against the blasphemers have only threatened uh, <clears throat> increased tremendously the increase of blasphemy i will give you just three examples when salman rushdi fatwa was passed against him the sales of book has increased tremendously he became a rich person and he got great honors bestowed on him from the british government his books were translated in several languages the person who translated his book in satanic verses in italian he was shot luckily he was not killed but the person who translated his book in japanese he was murdered what a good examples we are sitting uh the muslims killed 12 people uh in paris with charlie hebdo publication the next edition 
the Charlie Hebdo published was eight million copies. Usually they published 60,000. So the Blossom Memo was spread for 60,000 people. Now it did increase to eight million people. And that was translated in six languages. Are we suppressing the blasphemy? Are we increasing the blasphemy by our action? Samuel Petty, when he was killed, how it affected? Uh, government in France closed the major mosque in Paris and deported hundreds of people, uh, Islamic uh, imams, teachers, and uh, scholars. And this is what the negative effect I am talking about. Uh, Loss of me and apostasy laws. Um, it violated human rights. It it violated freedom of expression. Quran emphasizes the importance of tolerance, forgiveness, and mercy. Forgiveness enhances our relationship, and it is possible that the perpetrator might except that Quran may be a religion of peace and it should have enhanced our image in the world. Sharia laws are devised by human interpretation of Quran and prophetic sayings. This should be reviewed and revised <clears throat> so that uh, we can prevent harmful effect of these laws on individual and society. As, living, as people living in the West, we enjoy many rights and freedoms that are not available to our brothers in, uh, none in the Muslim world. Uh, so I'd like to conclude just by saying two things. We believe it is our responsibility to voice our concerns about how these barbaric behavior violates basic principles of human rights and simultaneously insults both Quran and Prophet Muhammad. So in the conclusion, I will say that we need to seriously consider the blasphemy laws and their applicability in 21st century. We need to pay attention to many modern Muslim scholars who suggest that these current blasphemy laws violate the teaching of Holy Quran and sayings of the Prophet Muhammad and these laws are not applicable today. I would seriously request all scholars to consider making the changes in the existing laws are even abolishing the laws. Thank you.